Hello, this is Mike at Game From Scratch, and welcome to week 29 of This Week in Game Development. A quick recap of the news and events for the week ending uh, June the 5th, 2016. And without further ado, let's jump right in. Now, as always, there's going to be a link down below with all of the links for all of the stories I'm about to cover here. So if you want more details, just check the comment down below, and there will be a link to the story I'm looking at. Uh, so starting the week off is probably the biggest piece of news. Uh, Unity changed their pricing. And this has really pissed some people off and for a handful of others made them quite happy, uh, to be honest. It all kind of depends on where you fall on the spectrum. I'm not going to get into a ton of detail about this. I've actually done a full in-depth uh, video actually explaining how the changes work. Uh, but essentially what has happened is uh, they've changed the pricing for Unity Pro from $75 per platform. So if you had iOS, um, Android and desktop support, uh, that was $225 a month. Now it is $125 a month for all three. So pretty much yay, a big win. Uh, however, if you are doing just one platform development, so if you are just doing just desktop or just station, well now this is actually $50 a month more expensive for you. Uh, the other big part of this change is uh, they introduced, um, oh, what are they calling it? Plus, uh, this is basically $35 per seat. And really all it is is their internet features, things like analytics, um, I believe ads, and a few other features, and it costs $35 per developer. It's kind of a turd layer. It, it, there's no positive reaction to the release of Plus, in all honesty. I have seen nobody excited for it. And the big thing you should be aware of with Plus, there's still a splash screen, which if they remove the, pl the splash screen, but kept the $100,000 limitation, which they have, by the way, Plus still has the $100,000 revenue limitation that Personal does. So really, it's just personal with access to analytics, ads, and a few other uh, online services from uh, Unity. If they removed the splash screen, it would have been a huge win. People would have been happy with this news. But for the most part, people are not happy with Unity at, uh, over the whole thing. Now, if you are uh, doing development with desktop, iOS, and Android, uh, this is a great news for you because you are now saving, uh, what do we see, um, 100 yeah, 100 bucks a month. Um, yeah, so uh, for you, it's $100 a month. For a lot of other people, it's $50 more a month. So it really depends on who you are in that spectrum. And then as I said, they also released this plus tier, which is complete and utterly pointless. Uh, another big release this week was Krita 3. Krita is a cool um, painting application. It doesn't try to be a complete photo editing app like Photoshop. It's all about painting and sketching. Uh, but now it's also about animation. So that's the big thing in this release. It's definitely worth checking out. Now, Krita is uh, GPL um, licensed, a completely free package, something you should definitely check out. And for game developers, one of the other interesting things is there's actually Spriter, which is a 2D IK animation package for uh, 2D games. Uh, there's Spriter support directly in Krita. So that's kind of cool to see. Uh, another thing from Unity is Unity launched the Unity Connect beta. There's not a lot of details here. Uh, you can sign up to join the beta and that's it. Uh, but basically Unity Connect is going to be a um, basically a job board. Um, so if you are looking for Unity developers or if you are a Unity developer looking for work or you're an artist looking for Unity work, etc., that's what Unity Connect is meant to be. It's, it's actually a cool idea for growing our ecosystem. It'd be interesting to see how this turns out. Uh, but right now it is closed beta. So you really, you can go there, uh, click this link right here and you can sign up to be part of it. But otherwise there's no information available. Another game engine this week was uh, game engine released this week was the release of the default engine uh, 1.2.82. Now the default engine, I actually did a video looking at it a couple of months back if you're interested in that, uh, but it is released by King, uh, yeah that King, um, and it is a cross-platform Lua Power complete game engine with editor. It's, it's quite cool actually. Uh, this thing or this release brings uh, improved editor performance on OS X and Windows. Uh, more GUI layers, I believe it's up from 8 to 16. Uh, improved account management options, including the ability to actually delete your account with default. Uh, somewhere in the future, they're going to be removing the required to have an account with them at all, I believe. So that'll be interesting to see how that turns out. Another engine release this week was Cocos Creator 1.0, sorry, 1.1.0. Now this is another engine I did um, a bit of a look at. Uh, so if you just go back through my YouTube history, I just 
uh, two or three months ago I covered this guy. Uh, oh, there's a link here. So if you go into the story, you can click right here and see the link on uh, the Cocos engine, a little bit more details. But it is uh, built on top of the Cocos 2D X platform. Uh, it's JavaScript powered uh, 2D game engine with a complete editing environment. Now this actual release brings you the ability to load uh, Cocos Studio or Cocos Builder projects, a new comp uh, Collider component, and refined asset loading APIs. And then there's a bunch more to it as well. So you can see there's several features of this actual release on top of what I just mentioned. Now the big game engine this release this week though uh, was definitely Unreal Engine 4.12. And this guy is a monster. I, I actually have to applaud um, Epic and Unreal. They keep bringing these releases out with so many new features at a very staggering rate. Um, you know, instead of screwing with your pricing Unity, maybe you should try and keep up because <laughs> I don't know, Unreal Engine is just nailing it lately. Now the biggest thing this one brought was actually Sequencer. Now Sequencer is something called a nonlinear editor, uh, which allows you to bring various components of a game together. So you can see here, they're making these cutscenes or movies, and you bring in audio clips, um, movie clips, uh, scenes from your game, etc., that are all kind of used to go together to composite a shot or an animation. This is very common in the world of video editing. In fact, when I'm done, um, with this actual video that I'm recording right now, I'll bring it into Camtasia Studio, which is a nonlinear editor, and I'll do things like add my title page at the front, etc. cetera. Uh, so this is bringing the ability to do really, really, really epic cutscenes into, oh, pun not intended, into Unreal Engine. On top of that, if they're also sort of going towards the previs uh, market or um, you know getting into movies and uh, that kind of area. So they're trying to move beyond just games with this release. It'll be interesting to see how it goes, but it's pretty impressive that that they got this guy in there and the extent of what it does. Now on top of that, there's a lot else in this release. They also added um, some additional VR support, including support for OpenVR, uh, which is Steam's SDK for supporting VR. Um, and they announced support for the Daydream VR, which is this new standard announced by Google, um, part of uh, you know the Android support for VR in the future. Another really cool thing with this release is the ability to, to cook uh, blueprints. Blueprints are the visual programming language of um, Unreal Engine. You can cook them to C sharp, C++ now. And that's um, a pretty big deal actually because from what I've been hearing, blueprints are up to 10 times slower than C++. Uh, but they are a rapid way to code, especially for a non-coder or a more visual thinker. So this performance hit has sucked. So if you've got the ability to design using blueprints, but actually as part of the build process, turn it into C++, we could see a lot of improvements there in that speed issue. Now, uh, this is a preview. I think that's what they got. Yeah, it's a preview feature at this point. So obviously, um, it's it's a ways out. But with the speed that Unreal Engine have been iterating lately, expect it to be a full feature very soon. Another really major part of this release is the full scene importer. This is really cool. This allows you to design complete levels in Max Maya or Blender, and then import them in one go. Um, so for a workflow perspective, definitely a time saver, especially if you do all your level design in a foreign tool. And, you know, generally what's done now is people do bits and pieces and then compose it in Unreal Engine. But if you prefer to work in your um, content creation environment of choice, you now can. And so now you can import the entire schmuck into um, uh, Unreal Engine and work with it in one piece. So that's a cool release for artists for sure. And then we get into the major bug fixes and changes. And as you can see, yeah, you know what, I'm gonna stop. You'll see by the scroll bar how far down I got, but there's a lot in this release. So that is a very cool release. Good job, Unreal. Uh, another game engine release, sorry, this one's going to be a little underwhelming compared to uh, Unreal Engine, but Ledworks just released uh, 4.1. Uh, Ledworks is a beginner-focused, strongly supported via tutorial uh, game engine and um, editor. Uh, it's available on Steam. I don't know the pricing offhand, to be honest, but 4.1 beta. Uh, mostly it's around the, the lighting and lighting effects, things like um, volumetric lighting improvements, uh, environmental probes, bloom effects, subsurface, uh, oh, I don't remember what subsurface scattering acronym actually stands for, etc. But they basically, they just really improved the lighting in Leadworks. I've got no experience with this engine, so I don't know if the previous lighting was a little weak or not, uh, but definitely a, a good improvement. Uh, next up, we see GLFW 3.2 was released. Now, GLF, GLFW is one of those kind of tools in the background. It's not one of those things you hear about a whole lot. But what it is, is basically a, a UI and window, window rendering kit for OpenGL. Now, if you've never done any OpenGL development, you might be kind of surprised to find out there is nothing in there for UI. Um, so input, any of the input handling, uh, keyboard, mouse, all that stuff, there's nothing. So basically, what you have to do is uh, handle 
you know, on Win32, you do it the Win32 way. On macOS, you do it the macOS way. So you have to abstract away all of this code into a cross-platform manner. Now, on top of that, um, OpenGL doesn't actually even have window handling code. There's nothing in there to say, here, create a window. You're expected to do that in whatever your native um, language is and then pass in a handle or a pointer or a reference to it. And that's exactly what GLFW does. It provides window management and uh, UI management handling. Now, the biggest thing of this release is certainly the fact that behind the scenes, it now supports Vulkan. So it's OpenGL, OpenGL ES, and now Vulkan support. So that's definitely a cool thing. And then of course, uh, you know, a number of fixes and changes. Uh, nothing, you know, overwhelming that compares to the Vulkan support, but definitely uh, a nice improvement there. And finally, we see this resistance of Substance Painter 2.1. Uh, the big guy here, the biggest news is definitely the fact that it's now supported on Linux. So if you are a Linux artist and you've been looking jealously at other people's ability to texture and substance, yay, you can now do it yourself. Uh, on top of that, they also added support for 4K displays, including better uh, high DPI support, which is nice because Substance actually had a really awful UI on a high DPI monitor. Um, they have support for exporting of 8K texture maps and the ability to import uh, UDIM-based assets. And that is it. That is the extent of what happened this week. Um, again, I'm one day late on this. Sorry about that. Uh, again, all of the stories you see are checked out down below. So if you want more details, the link will be available down below. I do one of these every single weekend, plus or minus a day. Uh, so if you do enjoy it, uh, please do click the like button and subscribe if you want to hear more. All right. See you a lot later. Bye.